top-rated Saturn I quarterly film report number 29 covers progress during the months of July, August, and September 1966. Highlighting this report period were the successful flights of AS-203 and AS-202 launched at Kennedy Space Center. The launch vehicle for AS-203 was developed and built by the joint efforts of Chrysler, Douglas, and IBM under Marshall Management. AS-203 flight objectives were to evaluate the second stage liquid hydrogen continuous venting, engine chill down, and recirculation systems, did tank fluid dynamics and heat transfer into liquid through the tank wall, evaluate second stage and instrument unit checkout in orbit, demonstrate orbital operation of the launch vehicle attitude control and thermal control systems, and ability of the guidance system to insert a payload into orbit, demonstrate operational structure of the launch vehicle. AS-203 was programmed to be launched from Cape Kennedy on a flight azimuth of 72 degrees. The second stage, instrument unit and nose cone were to be placed into a circular orbit of 100 nautical miles. The flight was planned for three orbits plus. The entire flight was to be monitored by television cameras mounted in the liquid hydrogen tank designed to relay pictures of LH2 behavior in flight. The launch was temporarily delayed by a malfunction of one of the two cameras in the all-important television system. A decision was made to launch the vehicle with only one camera operational. Liftoff occurred on July 5th at 9.53 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. First stage cutoff occurred two minutes and 23 seconds after ignition, followed by stage separation. Second stage cutoff occurred at T plus 433 seconds, placing the stage, instrument unit, and nose cone in a near circular orbit of 100 nautical miles. During second stage burn, television coverage shows fuel level decreasing in the liquid hydrogen tank. Following second stage cutoff, the bulk of the fuel remained settled except for a sheet containing about 50 pounds which splashed up to the forward end of the tank, then immediately resettled because of the small acceleration continuously imparted to the stage by the venting systems. Fog formed as a result of boiling, however no liquid was lost through venting. As part of the simulated restart, hydrogen was pumped engine, demonstrating restart capabilities vital to future flights. All objectives of the flight were met. The liquid hydrogen experiment proved that this fuel could be handled satisfactorily for stage engine restart in a weightless environment, a requirement for future Apollo-Saturn missions. Early on the morning of August 25th, final phases of terminal countdown began in preparation for the suborbital flight of AS-202. The launch vehicle for AS-202 was also developed by Chrysler, Douglas, and IBM under the management of Marshall. Flight objectives were to demonstrate the structural integrity and compatibility of the launch vehicle and spacecraft and confirm launch loads to verify operation of the launch vehicle's propulsion, guidance and control, and electrical systems, evaluate the vehicle's emergency detection system, which was flown in closed loop for the first time, and also verify the spacecraft systems and command module heat shield at high heat load during reentry. A flight plan called for AS-202 to be launched from the Cape on a flight azimuth of 105 degrees. The spacecraft was to reach its apogee over the east coast of South Africa. The command module was to re-enter over the Pacific Ocean 
about 235 statute miles east-southeast of Wake Island, with a total planned flight time of one hour and 33 minutes. After a 45-minute delay due to a programming problem on a downrange tracking ship, Apollo Saturn 202 was launched at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ten seconds after liftoff, the vehicle began its programmed maneuvers. Following a first stage burn time of 2 minutes and 23 seconds, the second stage ignited, and 23 seconds later, the launch escape system jettisoned. An onboard camera recorded separation and second stage ignition. The J-2 engine performed satisfactorily. Overall data indicated good vehicle performance. The emergency detection system closed loop, operational for the first time, performed as planned. After the 22-ton Apollo spacecraft separated from the remainder of the vehicle, the spacecraft guidance and control system, also operational for the first time, was activated. Spacecraft re-entry, photographed by a camera aboard the command module, was as planned. The Earth landing sequences, including the deployment and main parachute, were also successful. The command module landed southwest of the planned impact point. Search aircraft located it and pararescue swimmers attached the flotation collar. Several hours later, the USS Hornet arrived and recovered the command module in good condition. Data acquired showed good vehicle performance. Following completion of post-static checkout at Mishu by Chrysler, the booster for the fourth flight vehicle was shipped from Mishu August 10th and arrived at KSC August 15th. The Douglas-built second stage for the fourth flight vehicle was shipped from the west coast to KSC on August 6th aboard the Super Guppy. The instrument unit, assembled and tested by IBM for the fourth flight vehicle, arrived at KSC August 16th aboard the Super Guppy. Following availability of Launch Complex 34, all stages of AS-204 were stacked by the end of August. Pre-flight checkout is underway. No major launch vehicle problems had been encountered by the close of this report period. At Mishu, following completion of post-static modifications of the booster for the fifth flight vehicle, Chrysler placed the stage in storage, awaiting shipment to KSC. Following completion of static firing last quarter, the sixth flight booster was shipped from Marshall July 8th and arrived at Mishu five days later. Stage modification and repair were completed August 23rd. Post-static checkout was begun and is well ahead of schedule. The first stage for the seventh flight vehicle was placed in the static test tower August 11th. A short duration firing was conducted September 1st, followed by a long duration firing September 13th. The stage was shipped from Marshall September 20th, arriving at Mishu September 25th for post-static checkout and modifications. Assembly of the 8th Flight Booster was completed in August by Chrysler at the Nishu facility. Pre-static checkout of the stage was completed September 23rd. It is now undergoing preparation for shipment to Marshall. Assembly and engine clustering of the 9th Flight Vehicle were completed in September. Pre-static checkout is planned for next quarter. Also at Nishu, Fabrication and assembly of the 10th and 11th boosters are underway. Pre-static checkout of the S-1B-10 is scheduled for next quarter. Fabrication of the 12th and final booster under the present contract is also underway. At Mishu Assembly Facility, tank qualification testing of the 105-inch LOX tank, started last quarter by CCSD, was completed. 
reliability testing of the tank to 200% of design load was accomplished, marking another step for man rating stage components. Qualification testing of the 70-inch LOX tank continued throughout the quarter. At Douglas Sacto facility, the second stage for the fifth flight vehicle was removed from the stand and installed in the checkout laboratory on July 5th for modifications. Following modifications, the stage was placed in storage, awaiting scheduled shipment to Cape Kennedy. Pre-static checkout of the Douglas-built second stage for the sixth flight vehicle was completed in August. A full duration, seven and one half minute acceptance firing was successfully completed August 19th. Following replacement of a defective LOX pump, a second firing was completed September 14th to verify engine caliber. Factory checkout of the second stage for the seventh flight vehicle was completed in July. Following painting, the stage was shipped to SACTO aboard the Super Guppy August 30th. Static firing is planned for October. Work efforts continued with assembly, systems installations, and factory checkout for S4B 208, 209, and 210. Fabrication for the 11th vehicle second stage is well underway. Stage assembly is scheduled for next quarter. Fabrication for the 12th vehicle's second stage is on schedule. This is the last stage to be completed under the present contract. At IBM Huntsville, component installation in the 5th Flight IU was completed in July. Checkout was completed September 20th. Shipment of the unit to the Cape is planned for next quarter. Structural fabrication for the 6th Flight Instrument Unit was completed July 13th. Component installation was started July 15th. Checkout started September 28th with completion planned for next quarter. Also at IBM Huntsville, structural fabrication of the 7th flight vehicle was completed September 7th. Component installation was started with completion planned for next quarter. In summary, July, August, and September 1966 were months of significant achievements within the Saturn 1B program. A smooth continuity of on-schedule production of launch vehicle stages successful acceptance testing of the seventh flight booster, successful acceptance testing of the second stage for the sixth flight vehicle, the highly successful flight of AS-203, and the equally successful flight of AS-202, each contributing its share to the national space effort and to place human explorers on the moon. Thank you.